Lewis Bruce, the father of quantum dots, sees the world from a unique perspective. My life is really a testament to the value of an interdisciplinary education. When I was an undergraduate, I spent my time studying chemistry, physics, and mathematics roughly equally. He was the first person to understand the strange behavior of quantum dots, tiny nanocrystals that are bigger than a molecule, but don't behave like larger so-called bulk crystals. My personal interest has always been focused on the electrons. What are the electrons doing and why are they doing it and how can you tell what the electrons are doing? And Bruce's thinking underpins the emerging field of quantum chemistry. Based on his 230 publications, dozens of companies are exploring cutting edge uses for the glowing rainbow of quantum dots he first discovered. Quantum dots are finding their way into light bulbs, dyes, electronics, solar cells, revolutionary new biological imaging materials, and even new ways to generate electricity. Right after Bruce earned his PhD from Columbia University, he went on to active duty in the Navy. This was actually at the height of the Vietnam War. This was 1969 when I was ordered into the new research laboratory. I had never studied solid state physics when I was a student, and that really changed my life. In 1973, he moved to Bell Labs. I knew that it was a tremendous opportunity. I mean, we believed it was Bell Labs, you know, at that time was the best place in the entire world to do physical uh, science research. And it was also intimidating because there were so many good scientists in Bell Labs. He worked on materials for electronics. Metals pass electrons easily from one spot to another. There was no gap to block that passage. But in a semiconductor, the electron has to be promoted across an energy gap before it can flow long distances. And that makes semiconductors actually quite useful. Semiconductors can thus be used as electronic switches, the basis of our modern computers. Electrons stay put unless there is enough energy to push them across their energy or band gap. In 1983, Bruce was using light to measure the band gap of a newly synthesized batch of particles when... I noticed by chance that the band gap of this particle was a little bit larger on the first day that I made the sample. On the second day, it became the normal band gap. Bruce realized that as his solution of particles sat, the particles grew slightly larger and glowed in a slightly different color. He had just discovered that changing the size of a nanocrystal changes its color. Tiny crystals give electrons few options for where to move. Electrons exhibit what physicists term particle-in-the-box energy. As a crystal shrinks, electrons need more energy to get out of their boxes. That changes the color of the light the crystal emits. In conclusion, it had to be a quantum mechanical effect as a function of size. It took years for researchers to understand its potential, but... By the end of the 1980s, people began to understand a little more that this was interesting. Today, Bruce's insights power our microelectronics revolution, allowing amazing new nanomaterials to be invented and microprocessors to shrink ever smaller. After 23 years at Bell Labs, Bruce moved to Columbia University. Teaching was a major part of my thinking in coming back to Columbia. I had never taught. He teaches freshman chemistry and runs a lab full of graduate students and postdocs. To him, nothing is more important than choosing a good problem, no matter what anyone else thinks. Go off into the mountains and sit and think for a little bit. Why am I doing this? Is it really worth my time and my effort? And can I think of a better problem? And you tend not to do that when you're so busy that you just don't have time to, to think more generally about things. But it's important to actually do that. The 2012 Bauer Award and Prize for Achievement in Science was presented to Louis Bruce for his seminal discoveries and scientific leadership, which have made semiconductor nanocrystals, their synthesis, characterization, and theory a cornerstone of modern chemistry. <laughs>